Hello friends, in the present video, we will discuss about the friction circle method and also Bishop's method. So first let us discuss about the friction circle method. So in general, this method is applicable for the C5 soils. And also it can be also applicable for a special cases like purely cohesive soils. Why? Because for purely cohesive soils, the phi value is equal to zero. So it can be applicable for the purely cohesive soils also. So this method or by using this method, we can analyze the stability of slope only if we can have the graph paper. Okay. So from gate exam point of view, as it is obvious that they will not give you the graph paper and they will not ask you to, to do some lengthy problems that may take around 30 minutes or 40 minutes. So no need to learn much things about this friction circle method. Only we have to remember some important points. First is that it is applicable for which type of soils. And second is the second thing is that what is the methodology? And third thing is that is there any small formula or else as we are talking about the friction circle method what is the radius of the friction circle these things are more than enough for the gate exam even if you want to study more that is the unnecessary you are wasting the time okay so for this let us consider a finite slope let me redraw it as it is not good suppose if i consider a finite slope here okay let us assume that this finite slope failure is about like this. It is in the form of circular arc. Okay. Now, as we have seen, whatever the point you consider here, how many forces that can exist? There exists a normal force, and also there may exist a shear stress, isn't it? Those will be balanced by the shear strength of the soil. Okay, so for that, let us assume that if you are considering any point on the failure pin, let us assume that if this is your resultant force or resultant stress acting on that point, then the direction of this resultant will pass through the friction, will pass through the tangent of the friction circle method. That means let us consider a small circle friction circle here if i consider this is my friction circle let us assume that it is having some radius whatever the point you consider on the failure plane the resultant stress on the point will pass through the radius of the friction circle just like this suppose if you consider a point somewhere like this so here also it may pass through like this that means Whatever the point you are considering for the analysis, on that point, the resultant force will pass through the tangent of the friction circle method. Simply we can say resultant will pass along tangent of the So how we'll find out the stability and of slope there, that will be a lengthy procedure and that will not be asked in the gate exam. So in the gate exam, they may ask you, oh, it is applicable which type of soils? Okay, you can say C5 soils. And also, oh, how come the resultant will pass through the result? Whatever the point you consider, the resultant force will always pass through the tangent of the friction circle. And also they will ask you, what is the radius of the friction circle? Let us say, this is the friction circle, which is having some radius R. So, the radius of the friction circle that will be equal to capital R into sine phi. If your phi varies, that means depending upon the soils, if your phi value varies, your friction circle radius also will vary. Suppose let us say, if you are talking about the purely cohesive soil, if you are talking about purely cohesive soil, what about the phi value? Phi value will be equal to zero. If you substitute in this formula, what about the friction circle radius? That will be equal to zero. That means 
if if you are if you are finding this stability analysis for a purely cohesive soil the radius is equal to zero that means it is like a point as like we have discussed in the stability of slopes or phi equal to zero analysis here also there the entire foil soil mass is rotating with respect to some point of rotation here also even in friction circle method if you are taking example as a purely cohesive soil as phi is equal to zero the radius is equal to zero that implies it is like a point only just remember this point so this is more than enough for the gate exam point view about the friction circle method okay now let us go to the another method that is called bishop's method here also i can say you they cannot ask you an objective questions on this bishop's method also why because it is a very cubous sum that means it is very very lengthy and so many forces are involved and also there is no single formula that can be applicable for the whatever may be the size of the finite slope so that's why i can guarantee that they cannot ask you the uh, gate questions according to this method why because they are very lengthy and also they may take you one hour also to solve this problem but here again you have to remember some points two points if you remember that is more than enough first is that it is can be applicable for the c5 soils and also one more point is that if you recall swedish slices method so what there have, what is happening in this method in that method there in the finite failure slope each uh, the failure slope will be divided into small slices and then we will consider the uh, cohesive uh, shear strength of that failure slice and then we will find out some factor of safety and if you remember we have assumed some assumptions there what are if you recall it we can we have said that the forces between the contact slices will be neglected that means if we consider a finite slope like this and if this is your failure plane and if you divide it into number of slices if you consider one slice what are the forces you have considered you have considered the self weight and also you have considered the shear strength of the soil here but you have not considered any contact forces between the contact surfaces but in reality the contact forces will exist so in the bishop's method consider the contact forces between the slices are considered okay so in swedish circle method these contact forces will be neglected but in a bishop's method the contact forces are also be considered as the contact forces are also considered the problem will be little bit lengthy one and that's why they cannot ask in the gate exam as of now just remember only one point two points that is it can be applicable for the c5 soils and also the contact forces between the slices are considered these two points are more than enough if you are preparing for the gate exam okay so this is what about the friction circle method and also bishop's method so i will let us discuss a a uh, practical case that is what about the factor of safety or what about the pore water pressure if immediately after the construction that means we are talking about the case that is stability of slope immediately after construction okay already we have discussed about the stability of slopes but here the main important thing is that immediately after the construction what happens to the pore water pressure so that is our main motive so so in some cases depending upon the need rapid constructions will happen that means immediately they will construct some slopes and also there may be at the pressures okay so what happens there is that the pore water pressure will rapidly increase as your construction is increases very rapidly that means if you are increasing the stresses your pore water pressures will also increase so how do we have to find out that pore water pressures so 
in initially they will create it that initial pore water pressure will be neglected okay if initial pore water pressure is neglected then we will find out the change in pore water pressure change in pore water pressure is nothing but a final minus initial if your initial is neglected then change is nothing but a final pore water pressure so this is the method we will follow here that means for finding the pore water pressure at any instant of time immediately after the construction of this slope we will use that initial pore water pressure as zero and also we will use the method that means we will use skemptons parameters already i think in uh, shear strength of soils you can would, could have heard about the skemptons soil parameters so in this we will find out the some parameters a value and the b value so based on this a value and b value you will going to find out the change in pressure how you going to find out the change in pressure can be written as some constant parameter b into change in minor stress plus some parameter a into a uh, change in major stress to the change in minor stress so by using this relation we can find out the change in pore water pressure so in this if you talk about the parameter b that is nothing but a change in pore water pressure to the change in stress so this is under cell pressure that mean uh, in the cell pressure under the shear zing stage these all we you guys have heard in the shear strength parameters so that's why we are not going in detail that's why we if you are talking about the b value change in pore water pressure in cell pressure change in stress under the cell pressure condition and also if you want to find out some a value so there may be some relation a bar that will be equal to a into b already we have found how can we find out the b value so a bar value can be find out by using that will be equal to again the change in pore water pressure to the change in stress under which condition under shearing stage under shearing stage okay so by using e b b and a bar we can also find out the a so if you know the parameter c and b by using these relations we can also find out the change in pore water pressure just immediately after the construction okay thank you